Chapter 1, Understanding Estate Planning. Estate planning is an essential process that ensures the transfer of a person's assets and wealth to their beneficiaries after they die. It involves the creation of legal documents that outline the individual's wishes regarding the distribution of their assets. Among these legal documents, the most common is a will. A will is a legal document that outlines a person's wishes regarding the distribution of their assets after their death. It can include provisions for the distribution of property, bank accounts, investments, and other assets. If a person dies without a will, their assets are distributed according to the laws of the state in which they reside. This can lead to a lengthy and costly process known as probate court. Probate court is the legal process in which the courts determine the validity of a deceased person's will, interpret its provisions, and oversee the distribution of assets. The probate process can be time-consuming, expensive, and emotionally draining for heirs and beneficiaries. Estate planning also involves considering taxes and creating strategies to minimize their impact on the transfer of assets. Tax planning strategies can help reduce estate taxes, gift taxes, and income taxes. Without proper tax planning, beneficiaries may inherit less money and intended due to taxes owed on the transfer of assets. It is important to note that estate planning is not only for the wealthy. Everyone should have an estate plan, regardless of the size of their estate or the complexity of their finances. Proper estate planning can provide peace of mind and ensure that a person's assets are protected and their wishes are carried out. In summary, estate planning is a crucial process that involves the transfer of a person's assets and wealth after their death. It involves the creation of legal documents such as wills, tax planning strategies, and consideration of probate court. Regardless of the size of their estate or the complexity of their finances, everyone should have an estate plan to ensure their assets are protected and their wishes are followed. Question, what is estate planning? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 2, Importance of Estate Planning Karen was a woman who worked hard her whole life. She had built her career from scratch and with hard work and dedication. She had accumulated a considerable amount of wealth and assets. Karen was proud of her success, but she was also aware of the uncertainty of life. She knew that her assets needed protection, and her wishes for them needed to be carried out accordingly. Therefore, she decided it was time for her to start estate planning. Karen's main concern was her loved ones and their care after her death. She had worked hard her entire life to provide for them, and she wanted to make sure they would be taken care of after she was gone. She wanted to ensure that her beneficiaries would receive the assets she had worked so hard for, and that her wishes for their distribution were carried out accordingly. Karen began her estate planning by creating a will. She consulted with her lawyer, who helped her identify her assets and distribute them according to her wishes. She made sure that all her assets, from bank accounts to real estate, were clearly listed in her will. She also took the time to write out letters to each of her beneficiaries, explaining why she had made the decisions she did and expressing her love and care for them. However, Karen soon realized that her estate planning was more than just creating a will. She needed to consider other aspects of protection for her assets and her loved ones. For example, she set up a trust to ensure that her beneficiaries would not only receive her assets, but that they would be protected and managed accordingly. Karen also looked into life insurance policies that would provide for her loved ones after her passing. After going through the estate planning process, Karen felt a sense of relief. She knew that her wishes for her assets and her loved ones would be carried out properly. She had taken the time to consider all aspects of her estate, ensuring that her beneficiaries were protected and cared for. However, the unexpected happened, and Karen became seriously ill. 
She was grateful for her estate planning because it had made things easier for her loved ones to manage her affairs while she battled her illness. Her beneficiaries were able to pay her medical bills and provide her with the care she needed without any confusion or dispute. Eventually, Karen passed away peacefully, knowing that her estate planning had helped to provide for her loved ones financial security and future. Her beneficiaries received her assets, and Karen's wishes for their care and protection were carried out accordingly. In the end, Karen's estate planning proved essential in providing for her loved ones and ensuring that her assets were distributed according to her wishes. Estate planning is not just for the wealthy. It is for everyone who wants to provide for their loved ones and protect their assets. Karen's journey was a testament to that. Question, why is estate planning important? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 3, Common Estate Planning Mistakes Estate planning is a complex process, and mistakes can easily be made if one is not careful. Even with the best intentions, mistakes can be made that can have lasting consequences. Knowing the common mistakes associated with estate planning can help individuals avoid these pitfalls. One of the most common Mistakes made in estate planning is relying solely on a will to distribute assets. A will is an important document, but it is not sufficient for all scenarios. In some cases, a trust may be more appropriate to protect assets and provide for beneficiaries. It is important to consult with an estate planning attorney to create a detailed plan that takes into account taxes, creditors, and other scenarios that may arise. Another mistake individuals often make is failing to update their estate plan regularly. Estate planning is not a one-time event. Life changes, tax laws change, and circumstances change. A plan that worked 10 years ago may not be appropriate for today. Regular review of estate planning documents can prevent unintended consequences. Taxes are an essential consideration in the estate planning process. One common mistake is not planning for potential estate and inheritance taxes. Estate taxation can significantly reduce the assets that beneficiaries receive. Planning ahead can help individuals minimize the financial impact of these taxes and protect their family's financial future. Another mistake people make in estate planning is failing to consider all of their assets. Many people forget to include non-probate assets such as life insurance policies in their estate plan. These assets are distributed outside of the probate process and may have different beneficiaries listed than those listed in the will. It's important to consider all assets when developing an estate plan to ensure consistency. Finally, a common mistake in estate planning is failing to communicate with beneficiaries. Disputes are common when beneficiaries are surprised by the outcome of an estate plan. It's important to discuss estate planning decisions with family members and other beneficiaries to prevent misunderstandings or disagreements. In conclusion, estate planning is necessary to ensure that individuals' assets are distributed according to their wishes and their beneficiaries are protected. However, it's important to avoid common mistakes that can result in unintended consequences. Familiarizing oneself with the estate planning process and consulting with a qualified professional can help avoid these pitfalls and provide peace of mind. Question, what are some common estate planning mistakes? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 4, Estate Planning and Taxes. When James' father passed away, he had no idea what his father had done to plan his estate. James was left with a complex estate and very little guidance on how to manage it. His father's assets were vast, and James had no idea how to begin to manage them. James was overwhelmed, and, unfortunately, he made a few mistakes along the way. He thought that estate planning was primarily about taxes and had no idea that there was more to it than that. 
He also didn't realize the importance of having a trustee or executor in place to help him manage the estate. One thing that James had going for him was that his father had taken care of his taxes. His father had done ample research and had planned to minimize his estate taxes. This had saved James a lot of trouble, and he was grateful for it. However, James also realized that he needed to do some estate planning of his own. He sat down with a lawyer and went through the process step by step. He made a detailed list of all his assets, including some non-probate assets that he hadn't thought about before. He also spent a lot of time thinking about his beneficiaries and making sure that he had a clear plan for transferring his assets to them. He wanted to make sure that his family was taken care of after he was gone. With the help of his lawyer, James created a comprehensive estate plan that detailed every aspect of his assets and how they should be distributed to his beneficiaries. He also named an executor and a trustee to help manage his estate after he was gone. James felt a sense of relief after creating his estate plan. He had a plan in place, and he knew that his family would be taken care of after his passing. He felt a sense of responsibility to his loved ones and knew that he had done the best he could to ensure their financial security. One day, James received a notice from the government notifying him that he owed a significant amount in estate taxes. James was shocked because he had thought that his estate plan had taken care of all the tax issues. He went back to his lawyer, and they reviewed his plan. They discovered that there was a problem with the way that some of his assets had been transferred. James had made a mistake and it had resulted in a significant tax liability. Fortunately, the problem was fixable, and James was able to correct it before it resulted in any further issues. The lesson that James learned was that estate planning is not just about taxes. It's about making sure that your assets are managed correctly and that your beneficiaries are protected. With proper planning and guidance, James was able to create a comprehensive estate plan that protected his family and ensured his financial legacy. Question, how do taxes affect estate planning? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 5, Writing a Will Sarah had always been a practical person. That's why she decided to write a will at the age of 30. She was healthy and had lots of ideas and ambitions for her future but she was also aware of the possibility of the unexpected happening. So, writing a will was definitely something that was on her to-do list. Sarah started the process by doing some online research and reading articles about what a will is and how it works. But what seemed like a straightforward process at first soon turned out to be much more complicated than she had anticipated. The legal language and the technical terms used in the articles were difficult to decipher, and she soon realized that she needed professional guidance. She contacted a lawyer who specialized in estate planning, and together they started the process of creating Sarah's will. They began by listing all her assets, such as her house, her savings accounts, and her investments. They discussed how she wanted these assets to be distributed after her passing, and who her beneficiaries would be. Sarah had no children and was not married, so she wanted to make sure that her assets went to the people she cared about the most, who were her siblings and her close friends. She also wanted to make sure that the distribution of her assets was fair and that there would be no disputes among her loved ones once she was gone. Working with her lawyer, Sarah was able to create a clear and concise legal document that outlined all her wishes. She named her sister as the executor of her will, which meant that she would be responsible for following Sarah's wishes and making sure that everything was distributed according to the will. With her will completed, Sarah felt a sense of relief. She had done what she could to protect her wishes and her assets. It was not a pleasant thought, but now she knew that her belongings would be taken care of after she was gone. Sarah's lawyer advised her to review her will periodically, 
and to make any necessary changes if her situation changed. She realized that her life circumstances could change, and that her will needed to reflect those changes as well. In the end, Sarah was glad that she had taken the time to write her will. She knew that it was not an easy process, but it was definitely an important one. She felt more in control of her life and her assets, and that gave her peace of mind. Question what is a will and how to write one? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 6. Living Trusts A living trust is a legal agreement that designates a trustee to manage assets during a person's lifetime and distribute them to beneficiaries after the person's death. It's commonly used as an estate planning tool to avoid probate court and ensure a smoother transfer of wealth. Robert had always been diligent about his finances and wanted to make sure his assets went to the right people after he passed away. He consulted his lawyer, who recommended a living trust to protect his estate and simplify the distribution process. Robert decided to name his daughter as the trustee giving her the authority to manage his assets while he was alive and distribute them to his beneficiaries after his death. He listed all his assets, including his home, savings, and stocks, and specified who he wanted to receive each one. Robert's lawyer explained that a living trust would avoid probate court, which can be a lengthy and costly process. It would also protect his assets from creditors and maintain his privacy as opposed to a will, which is a public document. Robert was relieved to know that his wishes would be followed and his assets would be taken care of. He also felt at ease knowing that his daughter would be in charge of managing his estate, as he trusted her judgment and knew she would act in his best interests. Years passed and Robert's health declined. His daughter took over managing his assets, as specified in the living trust. She made sure that his bills were paid, his taxes were filed, and his investments were monitored. When Robert passed away, his daughter distributed his assets according to his wishes and in compliance with the living trust. It was a seamless process, and there were no uncertainties or disputes during the distribution. The Living Trust had fulfilled its purpose, ensuring that Robert's assets were protected, distributed to his loved ones, and avoiding the hassle of probate court. His family was grateful for the clear instructions and simplicity of the process, which allowed them to focus on grieving for their loss. In conclusion, a Living Trust can be a valuable tool for estate planning, protecting assets, and simplifying the distribution process. It's important to consult with a lawyer to understand the legal requirements and ensure that the living trust is customized to your individual needs and wishes. Regardless of the size and complexity of your estate, a living trust can provide peace of mind and protection for your loved ones. Question, what is a living trust? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 7, Power of Attorney Julie had always been a very independent woman. She had made her own decisions and never relied on anyone else to take care of her affairs. However, as she grew older, she started to think about what would happen if she became incapacitated. She knew that if she were to become unable to make decisions for herself, her loved ones would be left in a difficult situation. That was when she decided to create a power of attorney. A power of attorney is a legal document that gives someone known as an agent or attorney in fact the authority to make decisions on behalf of another person known as the principal in case the principal becomes incapacitated. Julie had heard about power of attorney from her lawyer and knew that it was an important document to have. She wanted to appoint someone she trusted to make decisions for her if she were unable to do so herself. After much consideration, Julie decided to appoint her son as her agent. She knew she could count on him to make the right decisions and always act in her best interests. Her lawyer explained that the power of attorney could be either durable or non-durable. A durable power of attorney would remain in effect even if Julie became incapacitated 
while a non-durable power of attorney would end if she lost the ability to make decisions for herself. Julie decided to go with a durable power of attorney, as she wanted to ensure that her son could act on her behalf without any interruptions or legal issues if she ever became incapacitated. A few years went by, and Julie was diagnosed with a serious illness. She knew that her power of attorney document would now come into play. She talked to her son and made sure he understood her wishes. When Julie became incapacitated, her son stepped in and acted as her agent. He made sure that her bills were paid, her medical needs were met, and her affairs were taken care of. Julie's son had the authority to make decisions on her behalf, but he always consulted her wishes first. He knew that she valued her independence and always respected her decisions when it came to her care. As Julie's health improved, she was grateful for the peace of mind that her power of attorney had provided her. She knew that she could rely on her son to be there for her when she needed him most. In conclusion, a power of attorney is an important document that everyone should consider creating, especially as they age. It ensures that someone you trust can make decisions on your behalf if you are unable to do so yourself. It's important to appoint someone who understands your wishes and knows how to act in your best interests. Whether it's a family member or a trusted friend, your agent should be someone you feel comfortable with and can rely on in case of an emergency. Julie's story is a testament to the power of attorney and the peace of mind it can provide during difficult times. It's important to consult with a lawyer to understand the legal requirements and ensure that the power of attorney is customized to your individual needs and wishes. Question, what is power of attorney? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 8, Guardianship and Conservatorship. Guardianship and conservatorship are legal mechanisms designed to protect individuals who are unable to care for themselves due to their physical or mental condition. These legal tools allow a person, known as the guardian or conservator, to make important decisions regarding the care, personal needs, financial needs, and medical needs of another person, known as the ward. Samantha had always been an independent woman. She had lived alone for many years and had taken care of herself without any help from others. However, her advancing age had started to take a toll on her health. She was diagnosed with Alzheimer's disease, which quickly progressed, and she found herself unable to take care of herself. Samantha had no family to turn to, and her friends were unable to provide the type of care she needed. That was when the court appointed a guardian and conservator to manage her affairs. The guardian was responsible for making decisions about Samantha's personal needs, such as where she would live and what type of medical care she would receive. Meanwhile, the conservator was responsible for managing her finances and ensuring that her bills were paid. Samantha's appointed guardian and conservator were both professionals with experience in the area of elder care. They worked together to provide Samantha with the best possible care and support. The guardian made sure that Samantha lived in a safe and secure environment where she received proper medical care and attention. Meanwhile, the conservator ensured that her bills were paid, her finances were managed appropriately, and her money was used to provide for her needs. Over time, Samantha's condition continued to deteriorate and she required more specialized care. Her appointed guardian and conservator worked closely with her health care providers and other professionals to ensure that she received the best possible care and treatment. Despite the challenges that came with caring for Samantha, her guardian and conservator were committed to providing her with the care and support she needed. They worked tirelessly to ensure that all of her needs were met and that she was safe and taken care of. Although Samantha was no longer able to make decisions for herself, the guardianship and conservatorship arrangements put in place by the court ensured that her needs were taken care of. 
her appointed guardian and conservator were both committed to providing her with the care support and attention she needed until the end of her life in conclusion guardianship and conservatorship are essential legal mechanisms that can provide the necessary care and support for individuals who are unable to take care of themselves whether it's managing personal needs or financial needs these legal tools can help ensure that the best interests of the ward are taken care of. If you or a loved one is facing a situation where guardianship or conservatorship may be necessary, it's essential to speak with a qualified attorney who can guide you through the process and help you make the best decision for your loved one's care. Question, what is guardianship and conservatorship? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 9 Charitable Giving Julie had always believed in the importance of giving back to her community. As she approached retirement age, she started thinking about how she could use her wealth to make a difference in the world. She knew that she wanted to focus on charitable giving as a way to support causes she cared about, but she wasn't sure where to begin. After some research, Julie realized that there were many different ways to give to causes she cared about. She could make donations to nonprofits directly, but she also learned about estate planning techniques like charitable remainder trusts, donor advised funds, and charitable gift annuities. Charitable remainder trusts intrigued Julie because they allowed her to make a significant gift to a nonprofit organization while also providing an income stream for herself during her lifetime. She could set up the trust with her chosen charity as the beneficiary and specify the percentage of the trust's assets that would eventually go to the charity. In the meantime, she could receive a regular income from the trust. Donor-advised funds were also an attractive option for Julie. These funds allowed her to make a tax-deductible donation to a public charity like the local community foundation and then recommend grants from the fund to other charities over time. Julie liked the idea of having more flexibility in how her donation was used and the ability to make grants to different nonprofits over the years. Finally, Julie learned about charitable gift annuities which were a way to make a gift to a charity while also receiving guaranteed fixed payments for life. She liked the idea of knowing exactly how much income she would receive and the opportunity to support a cause she cared about. After weighing her options, Julie decided to set up a charitable remainder trust with her local animal shelter as the beneficiary. She also established a donor-advised fund with her community foundation, so she could make gifts to other charities in the future. And she decided to explore a charitable gift annuity as a way to make a legacy gift to the local hospital. Julie's charitable giving allowed her to make a difference in causes she cared about and leave a lasting impact on her community. She enjoyed the feeling of knowing that her wealth was being used to support important work and appreciated the tax benefits that came with her giving. As she looked back on her life, Julie knew that her charitable giving was one of her most significant accomplishments. She was proud to have made a difference in her community and hoped that her legacy of giving would inspire others to do the same. Question, what is charitable giving and how to plan for it? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 10, Family Business Succession Planning the Hernandez family had been running a successful bakery business for over 50 years. It was a true family business, with multiple generations working together to create delicious baked goods for the community. But as the senior members of the family began to approach retirement age, they knew it was time to start thinking about succession planning and the transfer of ownership and management to the younger members of the family. The first step in the process was creating a solid business plan that outlined the history of the bakery, its current operations, and plans for the future. This was a collaborative effort among the family members, as each had a unique perspective and experience with the business. They discussed ideas for expansion, new product lines, and opportunities for growth. 
One of the biggest challenges of the succession planning process was managing the generational change. The older members of the family had a wealth of knowledge and experience that had been gained over decades of running the bakery, but they also recognized the importance of bringing in fresh ideas and perspectives from the younger generation. To address this issue, the family decided to create a management training program that would allow younger family members to gain experience and understanding of all the aspects of the business. This included working in the kitchen, sales, marketing, and accounting. All members of the family were encouraged to participate in the training program, regardless of their current role in the business. The transfer of ownership and management was a gradual process that took several years to complete. The family worked with attorneys and financial advisors to ensure that all legal and financial aspects of the transfer were handled correctly. They also focused on asset protection, as the bakery was one of the most valuable assets the family owned. As the years went by, the younger generation took on more responsibility and decision-making power within the business. The senior members of the family gradually stepped back from their roles but remained involved as advisors and mentors. In the end, the Hernandez family was able to successfully navigate the complex process of family business succession planning. By working together and creating a solid plan for the future, they were able to ensure that the bakery would continue to be a thriving business for generations to come. The family remained close throughout the process and took pride in the fact that they were able to pass down a legacy business to the next generation. Question, what is family business succession planning? Check the video description for the answer. Chapter 11, Seeking Professional Assistance for Estate Planning. Seeking professional assistance for estate planning for years, James had been successful in managing his finances and building his wealth. He had always carefully planned for the future and had taken steps to ensure that his family and loved ones would be protected in the event of his death. But as he approached retirement age, James realized that he needed to start thinking more seriously about estate planning. Estate planning is a complex process that involves legal knowledge, financial planning, and an understanding of tax implications. James knew that he was not an expert in these areas and that he needed professional assistance to help him create a solid estate plan. He reached out to a team of estate planning professionals who specialized in helping clients protect their assets and plan for the future. The team consisted of lawyers, financial advisors, and tax experts who worked together to create a comprehensive estate plan that addressed all of James's concerns. The first step in the process was a thorough review of James's assets and finances. The team examined his retirement accounts, real estate holdings, investments, and any other assets that he owned. They also assessed his current debts and obligations, as well as any potential future expenses. Once they had a clear understanding of James's financial situation, the team focused on protection. They created a plan that would ensure that James's assets would be distributed according to his wishes, and that his loved ones would be taken care of in the event of his death. The team also looked at tax implications and strategies for minimizing taxes. They advised James on how to structure his assets to maximize their value and minimize the tax burden on his estate. Throughout the planning process, the team worked closely with James to address his concerns and answer his questions. They explained the various options available to him and helped him make informed decisions about his estate. In the end, James was relieved to have a solid estate plan in place. He knew that his loved ones would be protected and that his assets would be distributed according to his wishes. He also felt confident that his estate would be managed in a way that minimized taxes and protected his wealth for future generations. The process of seeking professional assistance for estate planning was not one that James took lightly, but he realized 
that it was one of the most important things he could do to protect his family and his legacy. With the help of a team of experts, James was able to create a plan that gave him peace of mind and ensured that his loved ones would be taken care of long after he was gone. Question, why is it important to seek professional assistance for estate planning? 